you know, pre-ordering comic books is great, but how good are you at predicting the future? Hey there, I have an unboxing video for you today, and this is an opening of a recent uh, shipment that I received from Things From Another World, and it was a pre-order that I placed uh, a couple months ago, and it included a very nice stack of books, but in terms of value and even availability, the, the question I have uh, with pre-ordering is... If you're gonna spend all the time and money researching which books to buy ahead of time, which books to tell your LCS to pull for you, which books to subscribe to and so on, uh, when you get the books back finally, you know, we talked about timing before, right? The timing, timing the market, timing uh, scarcity, demand and all of that. Uh, what I wonder is if you are pre-ordering books and then you get them in hand, does it translate to a decrease in availability? And what I mean by that is, can I simply go find these books today as at the same time that I've received the order? So we're going to unbox this order and take a look at the books inside. And I'll talk about the availability of these books today and the price and so on, because a lot of times books don't take off the way that you think. And if you can catch lightning in a bottle with a couple of books, great. But for the most part, these books will always be there, right? So then that's kind of where I try and figure out what is my play here? What is my strategy? Is it better to let some heat build on a book and then go ahead and pay a little bit more and acquire it and then ride the wave? Or try to be better at predicting which books are going to take off, secure those, and then obviously uh, be in a good position once the books take off that you've acquired through pre-ordering, hopefully at a discount, right? So then uh, there's also the extreme, which is you didn't pre-order a book, it took off, it's super scarce, hard to find, it's only on eBay, uh, and it's hundreds of dollars on release day, and, and Black Pan Panther 3 is a good example, uh, some of the Sway variants and so forth recently have done that. And then you just have to simply say you missed out and you just let that go and just say that there's plenty of comic books out there and I can't acquire all of them and I can't participate in all of that market hype uh, that is sometimes nonsense and sometimes sometimes it's legit. And again, that's, that's kind of where like your predictive models come into play. Like how good are you at either predicting which books are going to take off, which books are going to get hyped, and then which books to time and flip. And uh, it's interesting to me, it's, there are sometimes I feel like even if I'm pre-ordering or a good topic on comments in my, my, uh, my channel recently have been around the timing of CGC, right? So if you're sending a book uh, out for grading and you get it back, um, six months later, nine months later, a year later, how do you feel about the book? Of course, they're your books. Uh, you can read them, display them, enjoy them, collect them, and all of that, and, and that's all fine and good. But I will tell you there are moments where, and I may have them here when I unbox this video, there are moments where I, I scratch my head, like either why did I order this, why did I send it for grading, and there's part of me that even if the book has demand, value, whatever, there, there's a weird feeling that I have, like almost like I don't want the book anymore, or I made a mistake, or there's some, some sort of disappointment that I feel with myself, which is really odd as a collector because the point of collecting is sort of acquiring and, and curating and, and enjoying things and having fun with it. But there's part of me that just thinks like, should I have just waited and just bought this from an LCS or an online retailer instead of spending all the trouble to pre-order and pay for all that. So that's kind of the premise and the, the background for this unboxing. So let's open this order and take a look at the books that I pre-ordered from TFAW. Okay, here we go. This is the box received from Things From Another World. Uh, it was received uh, late-ish February. Uh, 
And again, it's a, a set of books that I pre-ordered. So let's go ahead and unbox this order. Alright, no, this is not New Mutants 98. This is X-Men Legends 11. Uh, unfortunately, there's a... It's damaged. So there's a tear right there. Um, I don't know if that was... Somehow, for me grabbing it, I just grabbed the bag with my um, fingers. So that's unfortunate. But, uh, so yeah, so this is the stack. Uh, not a great start there. But uh, let's get going. This is X-Men Legends number 11. This is the Ken Lashley uh, homage variant to New Mutants 98. And you can see how Tifa does this where they alternate, which is great. Uh, again, not a fan of these stickers, and I end up peeling them off and replacing them with tape because we don't want them. We don't want the outline of the sticker mashed in with all of the books front and back. Darth Vader number 20. This is the cover A of the Crimson Rain tie-in. Uh, now this one... <laughs> This will end up being my third copy, uh, and I pre-ordered, so I paid, uh, I don't want to say less than cover price, we'll kind of go over that in the order details, but uh, I did pre-order this, I don't know why I didn't pre-order 50, uh, <laughs> I pre-ordered one, um, and uh, again, I'm collecting these Raza uh, Knights of Ren connecting uh, variant covers. Crimson Rain number two, so the Raza was the variant uh to this this is the cover a right there with ochi bestoon right on the front cover uh awesome so crimson rain number two scorched i don't know if to should call this spawn scorched or it's the scorched or just scorched i don't know but this is from image comics this is issue number two sheena queen of the jungle number three uh this is the rose besh cover um this is another good example of buy what other people like i am not a rose besh fan. Uh, I think her art uh, is is beautiful and, and certainly has a place. I just don't collect her comics. But then again, I'm holding this in my hand, so I guess maybe I do um, collect Rose Besh. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, I've stopped pre-ordering Rose Besh covers. I have a handful. Um, not sure what to do with them but felt like I needed to collect it because there were a couple of Rose Besh covers early on that took off. Um, I know, buy what you like, uh, but uh, anyway, so um, kind of slowing down on Rose Besh. Uh, homage covers, that's another thing. This is Savage Spider-Man number one. This is uh, homage to Spider-Man number one by McFarlane. Um, this is not by McFarlane, but uh, uh, this is by Sandoval. I thought it was cool. Uh, I'll occasionally, occasionally grab a homage cover, but this one's been done a million times. Um, Savage Spider-Man, I wasn't exactly sure what to make of this book, if it was going to be a new appearance or a variant or an alternate reality sort of thing, but I wanted to grab that. And then I got the 1 in 25, which again, I thought was a great cover at the time. I thought it was really strange and wild and different. And like the color choice and almost looked like a painted cover in, in some ways. Uh, so I just liked it and paid the 1 in 25 pre-order price. And uh, we'll see later in the order analysis if it held value. Uh, this is a new book from Action Lab called New Men. Uh, I got confused, thought this was New X-Men. <laughs> no, no, I ordered it. I, I knew what I was ordering. Um, and it's I'll do this I'll, occasionally. I'll grab a couple independents. Uh, especially independent number ones, and just grab them, hold on to them. And then if I hear good feedback in the market, it's a cool story, uh, then I'll end up um, grabbing the trade and reading it later. But I try and grab a handful of number ones here and there where I can. Moon Knight number eight. Uh, this is the cover A ongoing of the current Moon Knight series. Jennifer Blood number five. This is the Lee variant. I uh, actually prefer the Lee covers to Rose Besh, so kind of flip-flopped a little bit and moved to Lee uh, when I'm grabbing grabbing certain artists and, and kind of seeking out covers or upcoming comics that they're working on. So that 
is that one. Uh, speaking of artists that I collect, Jeff DeCall, uh, a lot of people are fans. Um, you can see why. Um, this is Inferno number three, the DeCall variant. I grabbed a couple of these. Um, I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, just, it's a, it's a mix. His style is such a mixture of animated, realistic, minimalistic, but yet detailed. Uh, Edge of Spider-Verse number two, this is the facsimile edition. Uh, I typically stay away from facsimiles. Uh, I, honestly, they confuse me. Uh, I, I, I will constantly go in my bin and pull out Ultimate Fallout 4 and swear that I have it as the facsimile. And now I'm going to do the same with Edge of Spider-Verse number two. Um, I'll make an exception in this case. Miles, uh, Gwen, uh, there's an upcoming facsimile around uh, Amazing Fantasy 15, and in some regards, you can kind of maybe get all these in a 9.8 and display them, and it makes it look like you have all of these great comics uh, in a 9.8, so it's it's kind of fun in that regard. Certainly, if you uh, haven't read the story, um, you could grab this, but then I would argue, too, uh, you can always grab the books digitally. So, again... Uh, I make a few exceptions, but not to be confused, that is the facsimile. Dark Knights of Steel, number four. I feel like uh, with DC, I just continue to get burned by the same thing and I can't help myself. So I I went through the whole uh, Dark Knights uh, series and bought variants and incentives and all of that. And now I look at that bin that I have and it's almost embarrassing. Um, and then here I am doing it again with Dark Knights of Steel. It's just sort of that uh, that uh, medieval fantasy sort of era of, of the DC heroes and villains. This is the Middleton Harley Quinn cover. Again, I liked the cover, so I picked it up. I'm not reading the, the story per se, but um, I am grabbing some of the covers there, and I'm trying to tread lightly and not go kind of all in like I did on the Dark Knights. And then the last book, uh, Batman Catwoman, again, for DC, I'm pretty much um, Batman only or anything Batman related or in, in, in the case of Dark Knights of Steel, maybe it's a particular artist like Middleton that I'll go ahead and grab. Uh, this is a Clay Man cover. Uh, this is the cover A. Uh, really great Batman and Catwoman cover there. So those are the books. Let's take a look at the order analysis and see um, you know, which books are still available in the market as a, a time of recording and kind of go through availability, scarcity, price, and all of that. All right, here is order details uh, from this order that I placed on February 10th. It was a pre-order, so it just sort of kicked in automatically. I didn't actually place the order per se, but it was the order was generated uh, February 10th, 2022. Um, I paid $98.77 for that stack of books. Um, there was one incentive in here. Um, that was the uh, Casanova's variant for Savage Spider-Man number one. Uh, this is where you get really hammered by Tifa. Um, and again, this is the trade-off. Um, that X-Men Legends had a tear. That's typically rare. Um, and again, if I really wanted to make a big deal about it, um, I could send a photo to them and they'd give me 10 or 20% back, but it's not worth the, the, the 30 cents or whatever they were going to give me. So, uh, $98.77. Uh, you can see here the bag and board service, the shipping, that's about $20, 21 plus tax, $29. Uh, that's a lot. Uh, you're talking about close to $30 out of a near $100. 30% of the cost of those books is shipping and tax. So I make sure that I distribute those additional charges throughout the total cost here in column Z of each book. So again, this is kind of the, the cost of pre-ordering that's a little bit hidden. So as we go through these, you'll see, um, you know, a book like, uh, let's say Inferno, which should, it, it lists for about $4.19 on pre-order, something like that. But then when you factor in all of the additional money, you're basically paying $6.00 for that book. So these are the things to keep in mind. 
The reason I have stuck with it and not gone with another online um, retailer for my pull list is because I typically get these books in a very high grade. TFA is historically giving me um, very, very extremely high grades and they're they're very timely for me. I know that there are some people who uh, complain about um, maybe the their processing time or delays, but I, I honestly have I've always had a good experience with them. Um, but to each their own, you can pre-order from anywhere you want. Your LCS doesn't bother me. Uh, I'm just letting you know where I get my books from and, and why <laughs> a $4 book is $6. Okay, enough about that. Let's go in and see if I added any value. So uh, the I'm using column U here. This is the cover price fair market value. So again, if you're looking at Inferno 3, I paid $6 even, and the current fair market value of that book is $5.99. So um, I didn't get it any cheaper, uh, lost a penny there. Uh, and most of this in column double A, which is simply evaluating the cost versus the fair market value, most of them are within a dollar or two. Um, you know, at a loss, uh, obviously here with the negative numbers. Um, but there are two standout books. The first one is that uh, Casanova's variant of Savage Spider-Man number one. Um, I paid $21.80 for it. I believe you can still find that for a lot less, uh, closer to fair market value, which right now is only $10. Um, I liked the cover. I thought it was cool. Um, but I, I swung and missed on that one. Uh, and I remember pre-ordering it. I didn't feel like that was going to be something that was going to pop. I didn't hear chatter about it on the secondary market already. I was just kind of internally speculating that if Savage Spider-Man was an introduction of a new character or variant of uh, Peter Parker, like a mutated version, then maybe that's his first cover appearance or something like that. Uh, doesn't always work out. Uh, so lost $11.64 just on that one book alone. And then the big winner here, it's kind of popping out. Uh, it's an eyesore here in column double A is that Crimson Rain number two Raza variant. That book continues to add, uh, I want to say like a, about a dollar or two dollars, or at least it has each day this week. I think there's some uh, awareness in the community around the Raza variants and, and those connecting covers and the importance of the Knights of Ren or the perceived upcoming importance of the Knights of Ren. I think that those books um, are going to be interesting to see. Um, you know, they could end up being $30, $40 books if um, those are considered first cover appearance. So I wanted to grab uh, as many of those as I could. So uh, I was happy to get that. So when we look at the the totals down here, uh, which again, looking at total cost, that's the all of those fees distributed across the books. It does uh, even up and square away at 98.77. Uh, raw profit of negative $4.48. So if I bought all of these books um, and compared them with the cost to the fair market value, uh, not great. Now, the other thing is none of these books really have any GPA value, so there's no reason for me to put in the grades and compare uh, the CGC profit column to um, those. So what I want to do is spend a minute or two talking about availability. All of these books are available at Midtown Comics, except for two. And, and I used Midtown as kind of a guide, right? Because I'm getting back into ordering there. It's, it's, a, um, it's a way for me to kind of immediately get access to the books that I want. Um, and they are a great source for recently released back issues. So recently released last anywhere from... Uh, this week, last week, all the way up maybe three to five years back. Now, the two books that are missing uh, that are sold out is Inferno number three, the Decal variant, and Moon Knight number eight. Um, the Crimson Rain one comes and goes. Uh, so that one, sometimes it's in stock, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you have to pay more than cover for that one. So that one's kind of in and out. I think right now it's not available. But uh, you saw, uh, or hopefully you saw, on a couple of my Midtown unboxing, I was able to uh, pull that book uh, through a wish list alert. So uh, as of right now, it's just the two books, um, Moon Knight number eight and Decal, uh, that I, I couldn't find on Midtown. And I guess the Crimson Rain Raza, let's throw that one in there as well. But I was just trying to look at uh, books that were 
recover that I wasn't able to acquire recently. Um, everything else is available. And not only is it available, it's available for less than what I paid. Um, there's no bag and board service. There's, uh, there is tax, but it's free shipping. So when you, if, if I were to cut out, you know, the $2 and 18 cents, and maybe we just do this for fun, really, just to kind of show you, um, you know, obviously, you know where this is leading that net negative 448 is going to disappear. But if this were um, zero and zero, then it becomes a positive order, right? So then it's kind of a weird thing. Like, you almost have to buy comics and flip them just to recuperate your cost of having them shipped to you or paying tax at the store. You know, it gets it gets a little weird. It kind of messes with me. But the point that I'm making here is, or the question I have for myself is, if I know that um, only two or arguably three books are not available out of this uh, 19 book order, then what was the point of pre-ordering? especially for that variant. Uh, if you ask me today, would I sign on to Midtown or I think even Things From Another World has that variant available still? Would I buy it today? Of course not, because there's been no no heat or no news around Savage Spider-Man. I, I don't know if it's a good read. Um, I, I wouldn't buy it today. It would be a, a waste of money. Um, would I pay five bucks for it? Seven bucks? Maybe. Because uh, I still think it's a it's an interesting concept and an interesting cover, but it's available. Um, for me, when I'm pre-ordering, I'm trying to get ahead of the scarcity game. I'm trying to get ahead of uh, books that you know are going to be wiped out in the market, and collectors are going to hoard them. I'm trying to get a piece of that uh, through pre-ordering, but it doesn't always work out. And what I'm trying to do is just study the pre-order. Uh, situation a little bit more uh, closely. Uh, try not just to hear other speculator news and jump on it. Um, but then also, then you kind of fall back to buy what you like. Like I, I was saying, the, the Dark Knights of Steel, uh, any, the DC, um, anything related to Dark Knights, it, it kind of, I get fooled by that because I think all of it's kind of a cool multiverse concept. Um, but then I look at the books and I'm like, I not that they're dollar bin books, but they just, I just feel disappointed for some reason. I don't know why. And I think just disappointed in myself because I should have known better where I could have waited, waited for a Midtown sale, you name it. Uh, I could have just waited on those books. What satisfies me is going through the books and grading them and, you know, putting nine eights on the back of those books and uh, on the back of the backing boards behind the books, not on the books directly themselves, you know, and then then I can kind of justify everything, right? If it's if it's high grade and it's going in my PC and it's filling out some runs and maybe, a, you know, the Crimson Rain Raza variant, um, who knows? Maybe one day it, it uh, contributes to maybe paying for the entire order. Uh, I'm not suggesting it's going to be a $100 book. I'm just saying, you know, you look back on past orders and go, what were you thinking? But then you find a couple of gems in there and you're like, that's exactly what I was thinking. I did it right. So... You kind of take the good and the bad, you move on and uh, and do your best at, at predicting uh, which books are going to be more, more desirable and collectible down the road while you're pre-ordering your comics. So there you go. I appreciate you watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.